This video is sponsored by Skillshare. At the beginning of time, there was only Nyun, the primeval waters of chaos. Then, in a great flood, the sun god Atum rose from the water and willed himself into creation. Atum then created Air, a son he named Shu, and Moisture, a daughter he named Tefna. They were the first divine pair and soon had children of their own, the earth named Geb and the sky called Nut. The second divine pair then had four children of their own, Osiris, Isis, Seth, and Nephthys, completing the group of nine primeval gods known as the Aeneid. Osiris then married his sister Isis, and the two ruled over Egypt together in an unprecedented time of peace and prosperity. However, their jealous brother Seth desired the throne for himself and murdered Osiris, dismembering his body and scattering the parts across the land. Isis then searched for the pieces of her husband's body, and with the help of her sister Nephthys, was eventually able to collect them. With the help of the scholar god Thoth and the funerary god Anubis, Isis was able to reconstruct Osiris, creating the first mummy. Osiris impregnated Isis after his resurrection, however he was too weak to remain in the world. Instead travelling to the Duat, the land of the dead where he became lord. Seth then took the throne for himself, forcing Isis to flee and give birth to her son Horus in hiding. She raised Horus until he was an adult and able to challenge his uncle Seth for the throne. After a violent contest, the case was settled in a divine legal trial hosted by the Aeneid. Acting as judge was Geb, god of the earth, who ruled in favour of Horus, who then took his rightful place as king of Egypt. Future pharaohs claimed descent from Horus, with it being this divine ancestry that gave them the right to rule. Amun, the Hidden One was the foremost god of Egypt, thought to be the invisible force behind all things, even creation itself. Unlike other gods who were linked to only one aspect of the world, such as the sky, the earth, or the sun, Amun was a universal god who had links to all parts of the cosmos. His prominence also increased as he absorbed other gods throughout Egyptian history, taking on their roles and powers. The most important of these was his merger with the sun god Ra, combining to become Amun-Ra. In this role, he became linked with the sun, which was an essential part of the Egyptian world. It is in this combined state that Amun-Ra rose to prominence, becoming Egypt's chief deity and king of the gods. Amun became so widely worshipped that he came close to becoming the sole deity of Egypt, with the other gods merely being aspects of his great power. Osiris Judge of the dead and king of the underworld was one of the most respected gods of ancient Egypt. His story of death and resurrection inspired the Egyptians to follow in his footsteps and seek immortality for themselves. The elaborate tombs and burial rituals found in ancient Egypt were all built in search of this goal, with the funerary practices being done to aid the spirit in its journey through the underworld. Pharaohs and wealthy nobles could afford more elaborate burials with trinkets and spells to help them in their journey but it was entirely possible for the average Egyptian to survive the underworld as well. The soul would travel through the underworld, avoiding dangerous monsters until it reached the hall of Ma'at, the goddess of truth. Here, the soul would stand before 42 judges and proclaim its innocence of a specific sin to each. After this, the soul would have its heart weighed on a scale by the gods Anubis and Thoth. The purer the heart, the lighter it would be. If it rose above the weight of the feather of truth that was placed on the other scale, then the soul would pass the trial and Osiris would evaluate its worthiness to pass into the afterlife. If it was heavier, however, then the monster Amit would come and devour the heart, erasing the soul from existence. Egypt's most important goddess, Isis was so beloved that her worship practically eclipsed that of her husband, Osiris. As mother of Horus, the god who represented kingship, she was thought of as the mother of the pharaoh, with each pharaoh thought to be under her protection. Her healing magic was invoked by ordinary people, greatly aiding her popularity, and she was thought to use magic to protect the entire kingdom from its enemies. Her magic was so strong that she even used it to challenge the mighty sun god, Ra. She created a snake to bite him, only healing him of its venom 
when he revealed his true name to her, which greatly enhanced her power. Son of Isis and Osiris, and god of kingship, Horus took an important place in the pantheon of gods. As the mythological rightful king of Egypt, each pharaoh was thought to embody Horus during life and his father Osiris during death. Horus was also considered to be lord of the sky, imagined as a great cosmic falcon whose right eye was the sun and left eye was the moon, with the downsweep of his wings producing the winds. Seth, god of chaos and destruction, opposed the harmony presented by the divine triad of Osiris, Isis and Horus. Known as the Red One, Seth personified anger, violence, and was often thought of as the embodiment of evil. He was a god of the desert, or Red Land, threatening growth and vegetation that was needed for life itself. As a mythological opponent of Osiris and his rightful heir Horus, Seth represented rebellion and discord within the kingdom. Seth was sought to express himself in the world through crime, disease, civil unrest, and foreign invasion. Despite all this, Seth played an important role in the nightly journey of the sun god Ra through the underworld. Every night, Seth would travel with Ra in his bark until the serpent Apophis, Ra's mortal enemy, attacked. The serpent would hypnotize all the gods, including Ra, and would only be resisted by Seth, who would stab it with his spear, repelling the beast. Arguably the most important deities of Egyptian mythology were the sun gods. Foremost of these gods was Ra, whose body was thought to be the sun itself. Ra was thought to have created man from his tears which fell to the earth. He then created kingship and ruled over his subjects as the first king, until he became old and weary. He decided to depart earth and was raised up to the heavens on the back of the sky goddess Nut. It was here that he became king of the heavens, now ruling over the gods instead. It was thought that the scarab god, Kepri, represented the morning sun, as he pushed the solar disk from the horizon to the sky, in the same way scarab beetles roll balls of mud along the ground. Ra represented the midday sun, as he sailed across the sky in his day bark, from sunrise to sunset, accompanied by an entourage of gods. The creator god, Atum, was then thought to represent the setting sun each day. At nightfall, Ra entered the underworld on his evening bark, and fought off his nemesis, the giant serpent Apophis, with the help of the gods travelling with him. Ra was rejuvenated on his nightly trip, and was reborn anew each day at dawn to repeat the process all over again. As a manifestation of his power, several goddesses acted as the Eyes of Ra. These goddesses were some of the strongest deities in Egyptian mythology, crushing the enemies of the sun god with their immense power. Because of their ferocious aspect, these goddesses were often depicted as lionesses. Most prominent of these lioness goddesses was Sekhmet, the daughter of Ra. She was known to breathe fire in battle, with the hot winds of the desert being known as the breath of Sekhmet. It was thought that when Ra grew old and tired at the end of his kingship on Earth, his human subjects plotted to usurp him. Ra sent Sekhmet to punish them, whose wrath was so intense that she nearly wiped out all of humanity. Not all of Ra's eyes were as ferocious as Sekhmet, however. Bastet was such a goddess, starting out as a lioness deity but transforming into a cat deity from the Middle Kingdom onward, as her ferocious aspects were toned down. She still fought for Ra, helping battle his eternal foe Apophis, but was also a protective deity, watching over women during pregnancy and acting as a nurse to the pharaoh. Some of the eyes took the form of a cow, symbolising their procreative role. One such goddess, Hathor, was the goddess of women and motherhood and was strongly connected with female sexuality. She was thought to watch over conception and childbirth. She was sometimes depicted as either the mother or wife of Horus, the god of kingship, Thus the pharaoh was called the son of Hathor, and queens were associated with the goddess. She was also linked to the afterlife, with women eager to assimilate with her after death, in the same way men wished to assimilate with Osiris. Neith was another eye of Ra who took the form of a cow. 
In some accounts, she predates creation itself and was the creator of Ra, his enemy Apophis, and of mankind itself. She therefore embodied a maternal figure for both gods and humans. She was the mother of the crocodile god Sobek and was thought to care for all the crocodiles of Egypt. Her maternal side was contrasted with her warlike role, where she was said to be a master archer. This association with weaponry led the Greeks to associate her with their own goddess of warfare, Athena. Ptah was the god of craftsmen and the patron of the great city of Memphis, which was the first capital of Egypt after its unification around 3000 BCE. It was the view in Memphis that Ptah was responsible for creation, with him creating the world through thought and creative words. He was believed to be the sculptor of the earth, forming the planet and much on it on his potter's wheel. It was Ptah that created the arts and crafts, who then shared his gifts with humanity. Anubis, god of embalming, watched over burials to ensure souls made their way through the afterlife. He watched over tombs and punished grave robbers who would desecrate the dead. He had a strong link to his father Osiris, whose body he wrapped after death, creating the first mummy. He became god of the embalming practice, thought to watch over the embalming booths where priests would prepare a body for burial. The canopic jars which would hold important organs during the embalming process would sometimes be modelled after Anubis, although it became more common for them to feature the four sons of Horus, with each protecting one of the lungs, stomach, liver or intestines. After watching over the burial, Anubis would then take a key role in judging the soul's worthiness to enter the afterlife, weighing its heart against the feather of truth. Only if the soul passed would Anubis send the soul to Osiris for final judgement. Thoth was the god of writing and knowledge along with balance and harmony. He was thought to have been born from the forehead of Seth after he had eaten the seed of Horus. Thoth was a moon god and was thought to have healed Horus's eye when Seth injured it in their battle for kingship, the mended eye now thought to represent the moon. Thoth invented the art of writing and became scribe of the gods, recording the divine words as well as recording the passage of time and the reigns of pharaohs. He watched over his sacred Houses of Life, which were libraries or centres of writing attached to temples. His wife was Seshet, who herself was a goddess of libraries, writing, and a keeper of books. As a god of balance, Thoth took part in the judging of the dead, standing by when the heart was weighed and noting the outcome for his records. If you want to learn to write like Thoth, or master the arts like Ptah, then you should check out Skillshare. The first 500 people to use the link in the description will get their first two months for free. Skillshare is an online learning community that you can use to expand your horizons. With thousands of classes in design, business, technology and more, Skillshare has something for everyone. From how to take the best photographs at night to tips on presenting, you'll get classes from experts in their fields, ensuring you have high quality teaching for the subjects you enjoy. With an annual subscription of less than $10 a month, Premium membership gives you unlimited access to these high quality classes, so you can improve your skills, unlock new opportunities, and do the work you love. And since Skillshare is sponsoring this video, the first 500 Lifeguide viewers to use the link in the description will get their first two months for free. Click on the link in the description and start learning today.